Welcome to my 3 star Yurtle guide. This comp is surprisingly strong when played correctly, so I'll show you how to do that by going over the build, what items you make, and what augments to take, how to play before level 5, during level 5, 6, and 7, then how to play after level 7, what you do if you get contested, then we'll go into some in-depth positioning examples. This is primarily a slow roll comp, meaning we're rolling now to 50 gold every single turn for 3 star units. Sometimes we also hyper roll, but I'll get into that later. We will first be slow rolling at level 5 with this board. We do that until we hit either Poppy or Zig's 3 star. Once you hit 3 star Zig's or Poppy, you level up to 7 and slow roll at level 6 with this board. We're running all 6 of the Yordles to gain the mana reduction. This is really important for Heimerdinger, as now it takes him one less auto to cast. We will be slow rolling at level 6 until we have Zig's and Poppy 3 star. Then we will level up to 7 and get in an Enchanter to boost our healing, preferably Janna, but Tariq and Orianna can also work fine if you don't find Janna. Once you have 3 starred every single Yordle, you add in Orianna at level 8 for even more healing, or Vagar for more damage. I'll go more in depth on why we slow roll at 3 different levels, and what exactly you do add in at level 8 later in the video. The reason we don't play Tristana carry with this comp is because it's just not as good as Heimerdinger carry. And when you're playing Tristana carry, you play a different build as well that doesn't 3 star all the Yordles. Therefore, she's just a synergy bot in this comp, and not the actual carry. Heimerdinger is the primary carry for this comp, so we prioritize making items for him first. He has two core items. They are Blue Buff and Hextech Gunblade. Blue Buff lets them cast every two auto attacks with six Yordles. This doubles his DPS, which is huge. And Gunblade heals up both Heimerdinger as well as other allies. And since we're only running two tanks in this build, we need to keep them alive for as long as possible. Gunblade also scales incredibly well with the Enchanter trait, as we get even more healing on both Heimer and the rest of our team. The third item for Heimer wants to be a damage item. It can be Jewel Gauntlet, Death Cap, Giant Slayer, Archangels, or Hodge. This is to increase his DPS, and also to increase the amount of healing that he does. The goal is to turn Heimerdinger into an ambulance for our team that also deals damage. Tank items want to go on Vex, as she will be a lot stronger than Poppy. Since Heimer is very item dependent, you throw whatever you can put on Vex, but the best tank items are Bramble Vest, Redemption, Dragon's Claw, Warmogs, and Stoneplate. Two great support items that should be considered are Banshee's Claw and Chalice. Banshee's Claw lets you corner Heimer with no worries, while Chalice increases Heimerdinger's damage. Since he lacks a bit of damage with his build, it's definitely worth getting some more on him. The best augments to take for this comp are So Small, which gives 35% dodge chance to all the Yordles, Calculated Loss, Thrail of the Hunt, Rich Get Richer, Item Grab, First Aid Kit, Metabolic Accelerator, Scholar Heart, Emblem or Soul, Bodyguard Emblem only so you can put it on Vex, Trade Sector, and Golden Ticket. My favorite ones are So Small, Calculated Loss, Trade Sector, and Metabolic Accelerator. The carousel priority for this comp is Tear, Rod, Chain, then Cloak. This comp wants Yordles as early as possible, so we always hold on to those in the early game. The ideal scenario is to have 3 Yordles by stage 2-1. It doesn't matter which ones, as long as there are 3 of them, we're fine. The ideal level 4 board looks like this, where we have TF as the item carrier for Heimerdinger. If you don't have 3 Yordles, you want to play TF carry or just completely open for it. Yordles are so weak in the early game, as the trait doesn't give you any direct bonuses. You play the early game almost identically to how you would play at the early game for Draconic in set 5 and 5.5. Therefore, you either play Yordles or you open for it until you hit 3 Yordles. The goal is to be at least 40 gold at Krugs with a 5 loss streak while still being level 4. From there we will hype roll a little after Krugs, so we do not level at all in the early game. Once we have our opener, you can consider making items, but since this comp is so reliant on blue buff and gunblade, we can't make any items that use either Rod, Sword, or Tear components. In addition, we don't want to win any rounds in the early game either, as we want to lose streak. So evaluate if you will be too strong if you make an item. But if you do decide to make items, the best ones are Bramble Vest, D-Claw, Warmogs, Thieves Gloves, Zizirot, Banshee's Claw, or Sunfire Cape. If you want to learn more about how to play the early game, check out my guide where I go in-depth on that subject. At the Krugs round, you should hopefully have 40 gold or more, and here you need a strong enough board to beat the Krugs round. As long as you have at least two two-star units, you should be fine. After Krugs on stage 3-1, you will be 8 out of 10 XP and still be level 4. Here, you will hyper roll down to 35 gold. 
This is because our odds of hitting 1 cost units here are really high, and we only pay 3 interest gold in total before we get back up to 50 gold. We want to find as many poppies and sigs as possible since we want to 3 star those first. The main reason for this is to clear up bench space. We only have 9 bench slots, and since we want to 3 star 6 different units, we don't have space for all of them. Therefore, we have to get the 1 cost out of the way first. In addition, we also have a 60% chance for 1 cost to spawn out of the portal, so if we find 7 or more of each unit after the hyper roll, we will most likely hit both of the 3 star naturally before wolves. Moreover, if we hit both the 1 cost 3 stars, then we can only get 2 and 3 cost units from the portal. This changes our average expected gold from the portal from 1.6 gold per turn to about 2.4 gold per turn. This means we're getting almost one extra gold every single turn for the rest of the game from that point. Bench space management is the hardest part about playing reroll yordles, and the worst case scenario is when you have to start selling yordles you need for bench space to 3 star the other yordles. Your bench selling priority is Tristana, Lulu, Vex, then Heimerdinger. You almost never sell Sigs or Poppy on bench. Sometimes though, if you are really close to Tristana 3 star, you can sell other units in the priority list to hit her and clear a bench space. Once you have rolled down to 35 gold on stage 3-1, you will naturally level up to 5 and start slow rolling from there. Once you are level 5 and have reached 50 gold, you start slow rolling, meaning we roll down to 50 gold every single turn. This is to maximize our odds of hitting 3 star units. We will be slow rolling at level 5 until we hit Poppy 3 star or Sig's 3 star. Once you've hit one of them, level up to 6 to put in 6 Yordles. At level 6, we will be slow rolling until we have hit both Poppy and Sig's 3 star, and once we have hit both of them, we will level up to 7 to add in Janna. There are a couple of reasons why we skip level 6 and go straight to level 7. The first one is because once all the 1 cost units are out of our Yordle pool, our odds go from 60, 25, 15% to 62, 37%. This makes it more likely to get 2 cost units out of the portal than 3 cost units. The second reason is, at level 7 we have a 30% chance of 2 costs and a 35% chance of 3 costs. So this plus the portal spawn should even out our odds of hitting both 2 costs and 3 cost units. The third and most important reason is that we get to put in Janna for Scholar, Scrap, and Enchanter. This is great as we get 3 more traits active. Scholar boosts our entire board, as all our units use this trait well. Enchanter makes Heimerdinger heal more, which gives us more frontline due to the additional healing from Gunblade. If you don't hit Janna, adding an Orianna or Taric instead works until you find the Janna. If you have to sell a unit for bench space at level 7, you sell Janna first, then Tristana, Lulu, then Vex. But keep in mind that the most important thing is to 3 star 3 of our Yordles, as then we have enough bench space to hold enough units to 3 star the remaining 3. You will stop slow rolling when you are 4 or less turns away from 3 starring everything. Since the Yordle portal will guaranteed give us a Yordle unit every single turn, we can guarantee that we will 3 star everything within 4 turns. From there, just econ up and start putting money into XP towards level 8. A side note though is that you need to be a bit careful with your HP. If you are 30 HP or lower, you might have to think about rolling down until you hit more 3 stars to stabilize. Like I mentioned earlier, at level 8 you get to add in an extra unit, and the best one to add in depends on the lobby. If the lobby is mostly magic damage, you always add in Orianna or Taric for another enchanter. This increases our own magic resistance and also increases our healing. If you need more damage, then you add in Vagar once he's 2 starred. It's important to know this before you hit level 8, as most of the time you want to sell the Vagars you get for eco. As crazy as this might seem to some of you, Getting 5 extra gold every turn helps a ton for your economy, and this lets you push level 8 much faster, and even level 9 in some cases. Vagar is a great unit, but without any items, he's not that amazing, and the whole win condition for this comp is to stall while Heimerdinger deals as much damage and heals up our team. Vagar doesn't synergize that well with our win condition, but like I said, if you need more damage into the lobby, then he's a great fit at level 8. Also note that this video is being recorded on the first patch, so Vagar might be super OP later, and then you might always want to put him in at level 8. But I'll leave a pinned comment in case this changes if you're watching this a long time in the future. 
If you're able to go all the way to level 9, you either add in Taric for 4 enchanters or Vagar. At this point, the game will most likely be over, but you can also spend the remaining gold trying to 3 star Janna as well, as she stuns for a long time at 3 star and heals a boatload with 3 or 4 enchanters. If you get contested, what you do depends a little on how you get contested. You can get contested by someone else trying to play the same comp, or you can get partly contested by someone rerolling Vex and Arcanists, Heimerdinger and Innovators, or Lulu and Tristana and Sniper reroll. If you are only partly contested, it's usually not that big of a deal, as you will hit quicker than them due to the Yordle portal, and you are guaranteed to get all of your Yordles 3-starred with enough time. The only thing that changes is that you will slow roll at level 5 until you hit both Sig's 3-star and Poppy 3-star, as we want to ramp up the gold from the portal as fast as possible. If you get full contested, you are in trouble, as it will be a lot harder to hit everything. Make sure to 3-star the 1 costs and 2 costs first. This is because they are easier to 3-star when contested, whereas 3 costs are almost impossible to 3-star when contested. This means that you slow roll at level 5 until you hit 3-star Poppy and 3-star Ziggs, then you slow roll at level 6 until you hit 3-star Tristana and Lulu. In terms of bench space, you always sell Vex, then Heimerdinger, Tristana, then Lulu. The only funny part about getting contested on Yordles is that the Vega will spawn out of the portal if there are no more Yordles to draw from. This means you can actually start getting Vagars before you hit all your 3-stars. If this rare case happens, sell Heimerdinger if he's not 3-starred, and put items on Vagar instead. As always, you can pivot to another comp instead of dealing with being contested. The best pivots for this comp are Swain Drain, Mutant Malzahar, or Lux Carry. First, I will go over general positioning with this comp, then I will go over some in-depth examples. General positioning looks like this. Vex and Poppy are in the front line together to make sure that as many get hit by the Vex shield last as possible. Tristana is a way from our team to draw out units into the backline and have them waste time walking up. Here she is also being used as farthest away bait against units like Lux and Blitzcrank. We also split Tristana away as we don't want her and Heimerdinger to target the same unit. Sometimes she will ult the unit, knocking it back, then Heimer will chase the unit and walk into the front line like an idiot. We lose a lot of fights this way and therefore we want to avoid this at all costs. Lulu is close to Heimerdinger to heal him and also to CC assassins that might jump over. Sigs is next to Heimerdinger to protect him, and Janna is above Heimer to ult away any units that come close. Now moving on to some in-depth positioning examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Jin and Orianna. We have Tristana to be Blitzcrank bait, our backline is split up, this is to make Orianna target our frontline with a CC and not our backline. Janna is on the third row to push the backline into the enemy board, reducing the value Jin gets from Sniper as our frontline will walk up. We are also positioned so that Jin will not hit Heimerdinger with a spell, and Braum will not hit Heimerdinger with a spell either. Against the second guy, the big threat is Yone. We have to just tank the Lux ultimate here, but since we assume all the items are on Yona and Fiora in this example, we will be fine. Heimerdinger is on the same side as Yone, this is so he can burst him down. Lulu and Janna are close to Heimer to keep him safe and push away Yone if he gets too close. Poppy is baiting Brahm's ultimate here. Against the third guy, the big threat is Urgot and Tom Kench. We want to avoid Tom Kench eating our Vex at all costs, as she is our primary tank. Even though he won't kill him, removing a frontline unit means that our other one can get bursted down quite fast. Tristana is in the second row cubby to bait the frontline away from Heimer once Poppy gets eaten, and Heimerdinger is positioned to burst down Tom Kench as fast as possible to make sure Poppy can come back as fast as possible. Janna is positioned to push away the frontline in case they get too close. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, comment down below what video you want me to make next, and if you want to get better at TFT, Join the Discord, we got nearly 4,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.